Welcome to the Safety and Risk Success podcast with me, Christian Harris. My guest today is Simon Jones, who's the head of health, safety and environment for NRS Healthcare. Uh, but we don't actually talk about Simon's uh, job or career that much uh, in this interview because we're on uh, this interview to talk about Simon's book that he's just released, which is all about um, selling in safety. And as he tells us uh, in the interview, um, he's had uh, a really interesting uh, background and a safety origin story. Um, he's learnt loads of lessons. He's developed as a person. Uh, he's developed some great insights uh, into what makes people tick and why people are so important. And he's decided to put together a series of books uh, entitled The Safety Salesman. Uh, and the first one has just been released in uh, in paperback. And that's what we're talking about today. So I think you'll get a lot from this. Simon is a very engaging guy, um, fun guy. Uh, if you read the book, you'll get his personality shining through uh, very clearly. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have an advanced copy. Um, and um, I think we talk about some really important topics today, uh, but do it in a slightly lighthearted way. And hopefully, therefore, you'll enjoy it and get some value from it. Let's get into it then and join my conversation with Simon Jones. Welcome to the Safety and Risk Success Podcast with Christian Harris. We believe that proactive safety and risk management powers business performance. Each week we explore this theme, sharing guests, stories, insights, trends, hints and tips. You can find us on all the major podcasting platforms and video versions are available on YouTube. But for now, let's join the conversation with Christian. So I'm Simon, everybody. I am um, head of health, safety and environment now for a company called NRS Healthcare. I've held uh, senior positions in a number of industries, uh, including construction and rail and education. And before all this, um, I was a serving police officer with Merseyside Police for, for many, many years. Uh, sadly, my career ended uh, much more prematurely than I'd have hoped. And I was injured on duty one night and uh, that brought my career to a, uh, to a rapid halt. Um, who am I outside of work? I'm a husband to my, uh, my wife, Sharon. I'm dad to the three kids. And uh, we, we live um, on Merseyside and have a, have a great time uh, running around after a young family. And in between times, I do occasional uh, bit of writing, which is uh, <laughs> why we're here tonight. Very good. And are you a red or a blue? Or are you not? I am a red. I am a massive red. Yes, I've been having a, a number of uh, arguments tonight. The Blues are playing tonight, as we know, currently losing as we speak. So I am a massive red. Oh, are they? Red. Um, yes, they are. they are. They uh... are, everyone. Yes, I will spoil it for you now. 1 0 to Crystal Palace um, as we speak. Very good. Blimey. Do you think they might go down? Uh, knowing the blues, they'll probably hang on as they always do. Somehow, uh, somehow, yeah. No, I don't think they will. No, I don't think they will. It looked like uh, they were. It looked like they were done for, didn't it? it? And then it absolutely, sort of, absolutely. And then Leeds, no. Leeds looked safe, and Leeds are all. You know, all of a sudden, Leeds have sort of dropped back down. Uh, again, so. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I, I think Burnley will go in the end, uh, in mm -hmm. the bottom three. But it's, uh, nil nil for them at the moment. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it'll be Burnley. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Well, we're trying not to talk about football too much. <laughs> People probably aren't too too bothered about that. Um, cool. Okay. Well, I'll splice in some of that. Uh, all right. You ready to ready to rock and roll? All day long. Cool. Simon, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having us. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's good. Uh, going to be talking about a topic that's close to my heart as somebody who's always trying to market and sell and and grow and, and all that good stuff. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and uh, limited football talk, I've been, I've been warned. You've, yeah, limited warned football talk. Yeah, limited <laughs> football talk. We'll stick, we'll stick clear of that. Yeah. Just, in, just in case, you know, because um, obviously we're recording this on the uh, 19th of May, spoiler alert. 
Uh, so, but by the time it goes out, you know, everything everything will have changed, and we could be could be prognosticating about football. And by the time that, it gets we released, called, we could, that's a fantastic word. If I knew what it meant, so I would. Uh, <laughs> You're supposed I would, to be an author. I, I, does, does that mean Liverpool wins? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, they've, they've, as as of the recording, they've they've already won two trophies, so at least they've got uh, they've got a couple that's, in the bag. That, that's right. That's right. And. Uh... Long may it be the uh, the quadruple may be ours, but um, as we say, is it no more football talk? Yeah, we'll You'd be here said... all night. No, exactly, yeah, exactly. So um, to start with, do you want to just tell us because um, you've got a really interesting uh, backstory from the perspective of what got you involved in in safety? Do you want to just give us a quick overview of that? Because I think that's really interesting to frame the the discussion and, and what you're sort of focusing on now as well. Yeah, so like like many people, I, I think uh, in safety, I, I fell into safety uh, ten years ago, having been um, something and somebody really completely different. I, I was a policeman for um, for a long time, um, straight out of university. Really, that was the only thing I had ever really wanted to do, and was uh, happily going along with it, with my career um, in policing. When unfortunately, I, I was injured, um, as many uh, many colleagues are. Um, in that line of work uh, and I, I was finished ultimately I, I, was, I was pensioned off at the grand old age of 35 mm. um, and, and that was really hard um, to take and it took you know a couple of years to sort of get back together um, physically and, and mentally um, and sort of put, pick up the pieces really um, and yeah I literally fell into, into a role with health and safety went to a local college to have a look at whether I was wanting to be a lecturer, I uh, wasn't sure what in, um, but whilst I was there, uh, somebody said, oh, there's a, job, there's a job going for health and safety, and it literally, this is true, it literally <laughs> was like that. Yeah. And uh, I, I put an application in, and, and I, somebody foolishly gave me the job, and uh, I, I haven't looked back. No, they, I, I, it was, they were lovely people there at the college. It was a really... Uh, sort of collaborative um, environment to work in, very different to what I'd come from. Um, and met some really good people. I was just really, really lucky that they were at that time building uh, a campus, a uh, brand new campus from scratch. So there was some big tier one sort of construction contractors on. Yeah. And I basically learned construction safety from them. Mm. Um, and, and then from there, never really looked back and always wanted to sort of move on and. Uh, and upwards to uh, keep pushing myself and developing and move through roles and uh, and, and yeah and, and find myself here and that, that's 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 safe my safety career in a nutshell yeah no, it's, it's very interesting uh, as you say a lot of people you know it's, it's i think safety nowadays is to me there's never been a better time to be involved in this space because of everything that's happening in the world i think the influence you can have the impact you can have has never been bigger but you know rewind 10 15 20 years and often safety was something that people didn't aspire towards i think now people totally. do aspire more towards it and um yeah which, which is which is a good thing but i imagine that your um you know your previous career obviously you you had to develop a very strong uh risk appetite or, or risk sort of um uh, a risk management ability, didn't you, to, to kind of be going into these different situations and figuring out, you know, is this safe? Is this not safe? What's the best course of action? So that must have stood you in good stead. I, I think so. I think it gives, I, I, I've done a lot of work, you know, post policing with, with veterans as well, military veterans, because I think we've got a similar kind of mindset in a lot, in a lot of ways. You're right. It sort of does condition you in a way to, to be, a certain way and, and look at risk in a certain way maybe there's a there's a pragmatism there or maybe there's a bit of uh, a, a realism because you've been you know faced with some really significant and serious issues um i also think and, I, and i've mentioned this a bit in, in the book um it does condition you perhaps to not deal with some things um particularly well and the stiff upper lip mm -hmm. kind of um thing that that you know the mental health side of things was virtually non-existent but that's certainly when I was serving um, and so there's that side of it that's I think for the safety and, uh, and health uh, people now is, is really really strong and should come on a lot more there's a big space for that um, you know mental health awareness is miles better than it than it ever was yeah um, so you're right you're definitely right there getting young people interested in it is is really important I'm really keen on 
you know, the safety apprenticeships and sort of getting people in, you know, straight from the tree. And let's not sort of just look at safety as a as a second career for, for mm. people and people be like, you know, sort of our age doing it. You know, there's some, some really good young people doing it now who, yeah. who are fresh, who can look at, you know, look at a business and, look, uh, and really operate like holistically. It, it, it's good. You're right. It, it's come on leaps and bounds. And only the time I've been looking at it, mm. miles better. Miles yeah. better. Yeah, no, definitely. That's that's good. So with, with that in mind, then uh, we've got these opportunities. Um, we've got fresh perspectives. We've got young crops of, of, of future leaders uh, in in the business. Why is it important to sell in safety? I I, I came at this from from the mindset that someone said to me once, uh, you know, a long time ago that, and it was it was in a policing context, but it's the safety bit rolls over that you're ultimately selling something that not many people want to buy and that that really has stuck with me that to do this properly and, and effectively you've got to to sell your ideas so you, you can look more into the language that you would associate with sales and marketing and commercial people really that you'd think was a million miles away from safety or compliance or all those sort of connotations you've got to link in with people and sell the idea of what you're saying it's not enough anymore just to go around with a clipboard or a, you know a pen telling people off and telling people no and you know what I say making people have it on an audit about you know just battering them over the head and all those negative things you've got to be positive and, and sell the idea of safety because a lot lots of people will not see it and everyone will stay safety first but for a lot of people like it actually isn't it's it, it's as important yes as other things but perhaps it's not first certainly for operational people because they've got other things to do as well yeah. so if you really need want to make an inroad with those people you've got to understand a little bit about where they're coming from mm. and policing certainly in the cid was very much like that. It was understanding somebody else's point of view, somebody else's mm. perspective. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And it's that, it's those kind of sales techniques. You know, it's it's knowing your product and knowing what what you're selling and how then to sell it. You've mm. got to understand, you know, the why, haven't you? You've got to understand why you're doing what you're doing. And if it doesn't add value, I think you'll struggle. Yeah. There was a book which I haven't read. I, I've sort of meant to read it, and it's by I can't. I think I think the guy's name might be Chris Foss, but I, I could be getting that wrong. But it, he was a really top FBI hostage negotiator, right? Yeah. Uh, and the book is basically telling stories about um, that career and actually trying to learn lessons from, as you've just exactly there said. You know, getting in the mind of the other person and seeing things from their perspective and trying yeah. to figure out a way of uh influencing them getting to a mutual mutually acceptable outcome you know which obviously yeah. in that high pressure environment is very very difficult but i think there's so many lessons um you know from from what you've said and, and your experience and, and that kind of example as well of that we we need to take on board because as you say it's a i use the term a grudge purchase you know nobody wants to buy uh, what I do, for example, really, love, um, until that. it's too late. Yeah, I love it. I'm having that in the next for my next book. I love that grudge purchase. You know, it, it, you're right because, like, when I, when, certainly when I when I finished as well, and, and I, I speak to a lot of veterans who are like this as well. We find it hard to to readjust in a way or think what the skills I've got are so specialized. What am I going to do with these in, in, in you know in, in, in the civilian world? Mm. But you, you come to realise, or I hope you come to realise, that a lot of it is transferable skills. It's just about learning the language of, you know, uh, of, of outside of those kind of organisations. And a lot of it is to do with that. And that that's a sales kind of technique. Good, good, I love that. Good, good purchase. I'm having that. Exactly. I, I didn't make it up. I had it. I had it from someone Doesn't else. Matter. I'll take it anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's all about it's all about inspiration, isn't it? Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. But that that you know that that's what it's about. It's about that tra transferable stuff. You're talking there about hostage negotiation. You think well, when am I ever going to like be able to use this and in anything other than this? You know, very tight parameter. But it's not. It's it's really transferable. There's a lot of really good people. Jimmy Quinn's a mate of mine. 
the, the, the ex-Ios like president he wrote the foreword for me. Yeah, I was going to say, did the foreword for your book? Yeah, yeah and you know, he's, he's, I'm not going to say he was stunned, but he's, he's working on a project of his own at, at the moment that is, you know, really like good for that. Uh, you know, of how to market yourself and be transferable, having spent, you know, most of his, you know, of his life in the military. Um, you know, he's doing really well. Hmm. And lots of people are. It's very, very transferable, very transferable yeah. skills. Yeah. So, so where do you see then, you've maybe alluded to it a little bit, but where do, where do you see that people kind of get this wrong at the moment? You know, what, what, what are the challenges that you have experienced, you know, where perhaps people have got a very logical argument, for example, but they're not able to sell the emotive side or, or, or what some other examples of that? I, 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 I think, and I, and, I, and I picked this up a lot in my sort of early days when I went to sort of like branch meetings and those kind of sort of CPD events, that there was just, there was a perhaps an arch typical stereotype of, of a safety person, probably middle-aged, uh, had spent the majority of their time in the industry in which they worked and then became you know, it's safety, sort of all the safety person, if you like. They're very good technically, don't get me wrong. Really, 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 you know, full of technical knowledge and ability. But I think perhaps the the shift has been more towards the the communication side. I hate the phrase soft skills, but it's the it's those other things that aren't really taught at the moment in the qualification. You get loads of people who will do a qualification mm. and you know do really well on it. And then put them in an environment where they've then got to go and translate that that learning or that message, and they and they, they become isolated, they become siloed. I think it's because it's a very very um, technical heavy sort of profession, this if you like, um, and it's 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 the, the the way of communicating that people you know are, are missing out on. It's how to learn the language of of you know of the boardroom learn the language of the shop floor don't necessarily start a conversation with you know regulations and facts and figures and the ceo is going to go to jail and all this kind of stuff there's yeah, you're just going to lose people you're going to turn them off mm. so i think that's that's perhaps where it shifted whether it was whether it was right or whether it was wrong there's definitely been a shift though in, in the last five years i would say to, to really you know for the main sort of players to really get on board with this kind of stuff and, and talk more around and i think that it's the, the mental health awareness has helped this a little bit as well about how to you know because it's it, it's hard being in this game because often you feel on your own mm. um even if you work in a team because it's a it's a hard thing to be i i I've done a bit in, in HR as well in a previous role, and that's a similar kind of role where you can always be adversarial against the rest of the, the workforce of the organisation. And, you know, there's, there's a way of doing it. And I think it's very much centred around being people focused. And I don't yeah. think I don't think safety was that before. It was, you know, regulatory focused. Yeah, yeah. Before. That's my smart idea. Yeah, I think that um, an analogy I, I often use that, that is pretty powerful and it seems to get this message home is of a, of a GP. So think of a GP and, y you know, they've got to have huge amounts of technical knowledge, but what they don't start doing is sitting down and, and quoting, you know, um, yeah. textbooks and, um, you know, uh, sort of uh, statistics of, of um, uh, operations and, and all this kind of stuff to you they they kind of they use that technical stuff but actually it's the soft skills and i and i, I know what you mean about not liking that phrase but actually it's a phrase everyone understands yeah. i think this yeah, is yeah. one of, this is one of the points I, I would make here is actually you've got to you've got to make stuff you've got to make stuff very clear to easy to understand so actually it's better to use phraseology that that is easily understood because obviously what you don't want is you know to start talking about in sort of semi gobbledygook and then you lose people because they're thinking what exactly does that mean and you know, so I think the plainer the language and whatever, but yeah, yeah it's about that bedside manner, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, perfect. That's perfect. Bedside manner. That, that's that, you, you know, know. Nick, that one as well. Oh, all, all day long. <laughs> I'm a scouser after all. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that, that's exactly it. And it, you know, I would say, like when I went to university, it was a massive difference in being lectured at. You know, some of them would just come on and just open the book and just talk at you, close the book, and be gone. 
uh, you know, teachers, trainers, if you like, are much more interested in, in the development of you and the understanding of you. But the doctor one is perfect. Yeah, a, bed, a bedside manner. That, that's really good. I'm having that as well, yeah. <laughs> I can see you writing all these down. It's, 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 it's like I'm being plagiarised in, fr- well, in front well, of Well, well, who'd have thought it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to say, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these, um, a lot of these uh, so-called insights that I have, actually are, are mostly learning from from other industries and you just think actually that applies and like we said about the hostage negotiation and other things it's actually well where does that apply to me and how does that because it all makes you know if you've got something that's that's quite clear and simple and it will make and it makes sense yeah. and it transfers it's just about how you communicate it isn't it it, it is and they mu- and they must talk about it because you, you bang on there with certainly with the gp you want you know uh, a surgeon to a surgeon will talk in a certain language, but a surgeon talking to the patient doesn't talk like that. Mm. And they must have those conversations. And if you go around there, you you know, you go around any sort of like, it's been a big safety conference that, that you know this this week, hasn't there? And how many people are talking like that though about saying, well, do you know what? How, how you how you say things, you know, I bet there's not I and mean, there needs to be more of this, this kind of, you know, how you how you approach it, you, you know, you bet, yeah, it's cool, your bedside manner. Oh, I love that because that's really important and that you're, mm. you're not going to pick that up in a, in a in a qualification so you need to talk about it more mm. Mm. yeah excellent yeah and the other one i'll give you another one gone um I, i've been talking a lot about recently is actually figuring out how we as safety professionals can produce a uh, undeniable link between what we do and the performance of the business because if you think about again from a board or a business owner perspective yeah every business owner understands the link between performance of their business yep. profitability and then that what i call power i've called i've termed this sort of four p's you know okay. uh, protection which is the safety bit so how do we yep. get make people feel protected that drives performance which drives profit and that drives power, which is kind of the ability to grow the business or do um, uh, charitable things or have social impact or whatever. But if you've got all those other three, you, you can do what you like, basically. But we need to sort of look at ourselves as how do we prove that link between protection and, and performance? Because if we can do that, I think actually we unlock uh, and unleash sort of huge amounts of potential, but also budget support yeah, yeah importance you know and i think that yeah. really is is kind of the key challenge for the safety professional um it, nowadays yeah you're right you're right and that, and I, that is a brilliant thing that you that, that you've said there and it, it's hard isn't it to to show the value sometimes because a lot of what you're trying to sort of show the value of is is prevention and it's hard mm. to sort of quantify you know we've stopped x amount of accidents or x amount of claims mm. it's hard to quantify that policing was often like that with your, yeah. your proactive work you know reactively when there's been a crime and someone's been arrested and charged and all the rest of it you can see that outcome whereas the proactive work often you're trying to prove what you what you've done you're talking about money and budgets it's all the same yeah you know whatever whatever line of work you're in trying to prove well, this is what we've stopped and you know prevented it's yeah. harder to, yeah. to quantify mm. and it, yeah you're right good, good right job. i'm gonna nick one from you now i'm gonna i'm gonna call myself the mi5 of slip safety I'll, i love it you can have it you can have it you can have it 10 percent of them oh, perfect. Yeah. That's, that's, that's no problem 10 percent of nothing is nothing <laughs> there you go there you go even i know that uh exactly so um so so with that kind of context then um how does the book help? You know, what's what was the idea behind the book, and how does that address some of these points? And uh, obviously, it's not an academic book. You know, go no, back to what I said, but it's not. designed to be obviously helpful and thought provoking and interesting. Yeah. And you know, so t- tell us a bit about kind of what led you to to write the book, and how does it kind of seek to address some of these uh, some of these points that we've been talking about? Do you know what I've, I've been thinking of writing a book for a very long time, and I've sat down um, many times. And try to write one on what predominantly I, I obviously I've come from, which is you know from policing, and it, it was it just wasn't getting anywhere to be honest. And it was sometimes it was fiction, sometimes it wasn't. Um, so I've always been interested in writing, uh, much to my parents' dismay. They didn't go on and do something sort of literary in the first place. So I've always been sort of that kind of 
you know, I like music, I like mm. art and books, that kind of stuff. And um, so what I did during the lockdown was I actually thought about sitting down and, and writing some blogs, mm -hmm. which again, you know, being a complete technophobe as I am, um, the, the, the kids showed me how to do it. I just started blogging and I had like uh, just titles really that I just started to blog out. So I wrote a couple of blogs on my, on my LinkedIn page again. Went, went to, a, to a, a conference one day and it was all about personal branding and all this kind of stuff. Um, again, stuff I had no idea about. I didn't have a, a CV, by the way, when I left the cops. I didn't have yeah. a CV, never needed one. Didn't know it wasn't on social media for obvious reasons, nothing like that. So this was all new. I've had to learn all this. So I was writing these blogs and they were doing all right. I was getting quite some quite good feedback, mostly from veterans who understood the humour and understood perhaps some of what I was trying to say. Mm. And they were they were more sort of they were safety related to a degree, but they were very tongue in cheek. And um, a guy picked them up from um, Glasgow University who was doing a, a doctorate degree. I was dead interested in them, and he and he gave us a little interview a bit like this. And he said, you know what, you should actually write a book. And I went, oh, yeah, I've tried. He went, you just, get, just go and do it. Write, write what's, you know, just write from your heart. Hmm. So I basically did. And that's what I've done. And I, I've had, um, I just get ideas. And it, it'll be one line or a, a throwaway phrase. Like you said to me there, like, you know, like the, you know, the phrases that you've used, that'll spark an idea in my hmm. mind. So I write them down and then I build the that I built this book from that. And I'm, I'm on my second one now. I've got basically 15 chapter headings already. Because these are going to be a series, these. Now, they're going to be a series. They're going to be the Safety Salesman, which is my sort of moniker. So this, this first one, Shoot From The Lip, which is, you know, again, a tongue-in-cheek thing about, you know, speaking to people. The next one's got a different title. But I've got the headings. Uh, and I'm going to, I build it around that, and some of it I throw in like tales of you know my youth, and and you know just and I've tried to make it a bit lighthearted. It's not yeah. a, like you say; it's certainly not an academic textbook. But it's I've had some really good feedback from people who just think it's quite easy to read. If you know people that know me <laughs> think you can hear my voice in it, because I've, I've purposely written it like that, so it yeah. sounds like we're having a conversation. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's designed for that. It's not too big. It's not too onerous to, to read. And it, it's just got some of my tales in it, you know. But, mm -hmm. um, but no, that's where, that's where it came from. Um, I, re I really enjoyed doing it. Um, I put at the end, it was good therapy. It was, it is, um, you know, and it, it, I encourage people to do it. it. A really good sort of compliment, again, you know, not to name dropping, like, well, you know, Jimmy Quinn there. He, he's gone on the back of this and he's done his own thing with, with his, it could be different to mine, his own thing. And I won't spoil it for anybody yet. And that's really inspiring to, you know, for him to have gone and done that. And when, when I read his foreword, because I, I didn't really know him before the lockdown, I just met him like, like this sort of through, yeah. through the internet and stuff and through, through an IOSH meeting. And um, I, I, I reached out to who I call a proper author, Karen, who's written a book, People Power, which is, you know, a you know, a, a proper book, if you like, on safety. And she was really nice. And she I spoke to her on the phone a couple of times and she gave me some really good tips and to get it over the line and, and pull together what was a, a bit of a mess mm. into a book and some really good people out there. But that, that, yeah, that's where it came from. Jimmy wrote his, his piece for me. And, you know, it brought a tear to my eye. Genuinely, it's lovely. It's the feedback that people are, are giving it. It's, it's lovely. To be, you know, and people can relate to it, which is what I wanted to do. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's nice. It's, it's good. Good on you. I mean, <clears throat> a book is on is well on my agenda. In fact, I've kind of started a little bit. But I uh, my lockdown creative project was setting up this podcast. So well, this is um, it. You, and you're doing it, aren't you? Yeah, doing it, get, approaching episode 100. So, uh, yeah, managing to, managed to do it every single week. So, I think then, it's great. I, th I, I think it's ace. I think it's really good. There's, there's loads of people doing, you know, really good stuff. Like, you know, I, I, I couldn't do this because I, I wouldn't know where to start. So, like Karen said to me, 
you know, tell your truth. Mm. So I, I found that was my sort of format. This is yours, you know. Yeah. There's some really good creative people out there that you mm. wouldn't necessarily associate, you know, with it. But no, good on you. Yeah. One of the things that that I liked was, as you said, that it's it's a bit tongue in cheek and it's kind of conversational and it's and it's kind of there's a bit of fun in there if you know what I mean. And I think it's yeah. not, not taking it to itself too seriously. No. Um, and I think that is something where, again, that sort of tone is very effective at kind of disarming people and engaging people and, um, you know, getting people on board with what actually is a very serious subject, safety. Yeah. Uh, but if you go, again, a bit too too serious with it, you can turn yeah. people off. Um, how, yeah. how, have you, how have you sort of found that approach and using a bit of humour and personality? How has that helped you in your kind of career and, and um so far so you see that's that's come from experience and um i'd spent 10 years in in uniformed units and specialist units you know uh, doing very much the sort of the sharp end if you like and was a certain way and then when i went into cid it was a completely different way of of sort of being and you're right there it's disarming people and it's using humor it's using um, language to speak to people and interview people. And I learn of really, really good people who, uh, at times, I would wonder where is this interview going? Because it was like going around the houses. We were talking about nothing to do with like what I thought we'd be doing. I, I, my, my experience up to that point, and it was 10 years worth of experience. It's a bit, a long bit time. like being on this podcast almost. Well, there you go. There you go. You know, where's he going? Yeah. So uh, it's, <laughs> I, did, I did warn you. Um, you know, it's about you not you know going going around the houses, and you've got to you've got to duck and weave, and you realise there is a way of um, of speaking to people, and that that's where I've come from with this. Mm. I've learned it through experience. I'm probably getting it wrong in my twenties, you know, to a degree. I, I wasn't like this necessarily in my twenties. I was I was always like into the, what I was into, but yeah. my approach to work and like to was was more like the other side whereas now you know i'm much more confident and comfortable just to you know we'll have a conversation about it could be anything get to know people yeah and then we'll talk a little bit about the safety and then we'll go back to something else do you know what i mean yeah. and, it, and it's, it works for me much more effectively than yeah. just yeah. rock up me to do an audit or whatever you know it's yeah get to know it's all about connection, isn't it? Personal connection at the end of the day. It to, is. I'm scared to... to talk. I'm scared to talk now. You've, you've, you've put, me, put me off. You've set me off a track now. I'm scared to talk. I've got off a tangent. But no, <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. You know, you've got to you've got to build that rapport with with somebody. Um, it's it's the most important thing. So That's you nice. know, in, in in business, which is kind of what we're talking about, really, isn't it? You know, if you're looking to sell something, or or, or influence somebody into an idea, you've got to have that rapport to start with. Otherwise, you know, yeah, you're never yeah, going to get anywhere, really. Um, yeah, that, it's absolutely that, and it is a, it is a trick. It's a it's a sales trick or a technique, call it whatever you want. But mm -hmm. It definitely is a skill. Definitely yeah. is a skill. Definitely, yeah. So, um, if you wouldn't mind, just a little spoiler from the book. What would you say is the favourite? You know, just a, a summary of the of the favourite uh, story that you've that you've put in there, just to sort of whet people's appetites, and then we'll, favourite uh, story. Yeah. Right, so I've got skim through a couple of bits here. I know, I knew, I knew you'd ask me this as well. I, I like, like, I've got like some of the, the, the some of the funny ones, like the, the the some of the ones that stand out. The chapters, like one's called "Talk to Me, Goose." You know, it's obviously a Top Gun reference. That that is all about communication. That that grabs people's attention. I do like that one. That's that's how to speak to people. I yeah. what, my my favorite one. It was one of the first blogs I ever did. But they basically expanded. Was the next chapter? It's called "Don't Wait for Your Ship to Come In," um, which again is a is a is a, a quote from Barry Sheen, the, the motorcycle racer. That that's a very personal chapter. That is about not again. It's not safety related directly. It's about not sitting around waiting for things to happen mm. to you, uh, which is what I've never really done. Um, you know, it's about going out there and getting it, being positive, having a positive mindset. Uh, don't expect things to come, you know, to you just because you want them to, uh, you know, just because you've sat, I don't know, a knee bosch diploma that you're going to go and necessarily, you know, get a good job somewhere because, you know, you need to go out there and 
uh, and do with it and find it. So that that's a very personal chapter that I like. And, you know, one of them is called Two Magnums and Eclipse, so for God's sake, you know, it's like, what on earth is that about? I can't even remember myself. Um, no, <laughs> I can't. I can't. You know, and it just... It's it's all it's what well, it's all about people. That that's what it's about. It's about people and yeah. what you know. And the the the, the chap that that was just come. That's a, and that's a true story. That by the way, to my to my was in the culture. That is a true story. They are true. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's very personal to me. But the uh, people have, have written to me and have, have you know spoke to me on the phone or whatever and said I can relate to it. And that is on a serious note. I'll be serious for a minute. That is what is most important that people yeah. have related to it because you, if I've made a connection, mate, that is what I wanted to do, and, yeah. and that that really is important to me. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, uh, show show us the cover. Show us the cover of the book. Shall, now shall, out in paperback. shall I? Yeah. United is out in paperback. There you go. It's uh, there. It is the safety salesman. This one. This one. Shoot from the lip. And those of you who are uh, avid music fans of a certain era. May notice it is a riff on a factory records poster, but uh, I will leave that to you to discover yourselves. Mrs. Jones designed the cover for me. Um, all di- oh, yes, all DIY. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a series on. And uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're cracking on with the next one as we speak. But um, yes, that's that's me, that's me book. Perfect. So. Um... What we'll do, we'll um, we'll put a link uh, in the show notes to for people to, to buy the book, obviously, because that that'd be great. Um, I assume it's you know Amazon or or somewhere relatively easy for people to to be able to get hold of it. Correct. Yeah. Yes, Amazon. Perfect. And um, other than that, Simon, what's what's the best way for uh, for people to kind of get in touch with you and and engage with you and, and get to know you a bit better once they've uh, read some read a bit read a bit about yourself in in the book F- find us on linkedin I, I'm, I'm on that I'm, I'm active on that i'm not really on any other socials to just, I'm, I'm on that i do quite a bit on that more than happy to speak to people on that find us connect to us uh, uh, you know and we'll we'll go from there to, you know uh, lots of people. I, su- I support a lot of people through the the IOSH and the IIRSM mentor as well. So people are interested in in, in that and want you know a certain you know my sort of style if you like. More than happy to, to look at that with people as well. So just find us on LinkedIn and we'll, we'll go from there. Good stuff. All right, Simon. Well, look, thanks very much for that. Really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed reading the book as well. Thank you for sending me a bit of an advanced copy. Uh, and uh, yeah, look forward to to keeping the discussion going and perhaps perhaps when uh, book number two's out we'll have you back on and and chat about that one as well love to thanks for having us mate appreciate it thanks simon and thanks everybody uh, that's joined us in the audience as well and we'll be back next week with another interview cheers thanks for joining us on the safety and risk success podcast if you've enjoyed this episode please hit follow and do share on social media Does anyone you know spring to mind as a great guest, even yourself? If so, please contact us on podcast at slipsafety.co.uk. See you next week for another episode.